a major winter storm. Wallabies. The bruising fight to win Tuesday's Republican the most dangerous virus possible. Los Angeles, California, second most populous city in the United States, spread out over 468 square miles. With nearly 4 million residents and fewer than 10,000 police officers sworn to protect and serve, keeping order is a full-time job. We are playing probabilities um, and putting officers in the right place at the right time. To make the most of their resources, police captains like Sean Malinowski of the LAPD and other police departments across the country are turning to a new tactic to help stop crime before it happens. It's called predictive policing. It calculates for the next 12 hours in the future, what areas have the highest probability of a crime occurring. And then what we do is we provide that information to the officers, and then the officers go out and they try to prevent those crimes from occurring. The predictive policing program used by the LAPD didn't come out of a police academy. It's based on research by a team of mathematicians and social scientists at UCLA, trying to predict where and when crime is most likely to happen. I had these ideas that really human behavior is actually really quite predictable and that you can uh, study human behavior and understand where crime patterns come from in a very quantitative way. With funding from the National Science Foundation, anthropology professor Jeff Brantingham teamed up with mathematics professor Andrea Bertozzi and others to analyze crime patterns and develop computer models to simulate criminal behavior. Their crime prediction model is based on the same algorithms used to predict earthquakes and aftershocks. Once an event happens, it triggers another event. And so you can apply this idea to gang crimes, you can apply it to burglaries, you can apply it to automobile theft. There are many types of activities for which this idea is very relevant. Thousands of pieces of crime data from the LAPD, including locations, times, and dates of past crimes, are processed by the software program known as PredPol to calculate and predict the potential criminal activity for an area at a certain time. And those predictions are delivered back to the police departments in a way that allows them to use it in a real-time fashion. So I'm going to code 100 in the area. At roll call in the Foothill area of Los Angeles, where UCLA tested the program in 2011. So today we're going to hand out the predictive policing maps. Officers receive maps showing the areas of predicted activity for the next shift. Red boxes on the map highlight the hot spots, areas measuring 500 feet by 500 feet that will require extra patrols. So the officers know that's the highest probability area where they should be looking for a crime to be committed. And we ask them to get in there and disrupt the crime from occurring or deny the criminal the opportunity to commit the crime. That's just what happened in 2011 in Santa Cruz, California, where officers were patrolling a hot spot, putting them in the right place at the right time to stop an assault. We came here, uh, did extra patrols, and we were, a crime. we were able to stop a crime in progress before it got worse. We are helping police fight crime by giving them the best state-of-the-art mathematical models and algorithms to take the data from yesterday and today and figure out what's going to happen tomorrow in the field. With mathematics and social sciences, police have a new weapon in their arsenal, helping not only to protect and serve, but also to predict a crime before it happens.